Welcome, we're going to be doing Physics 123, lab number six, the telescope lab. Uh, this lab is going to be a little bit different than the other labs that you've done up to this point. Uh, we're actually going to give you a data file, uh, an Excel data file, that you will do some uh, plotting and interpreting for yourself, uh, which before we just gave you all the measurements. And so this lab may take a little bit longer than the other ones, but I think that it'll provide a lot more learning opportunities and give you a lot of good experience. So thanks for watching and good luck. Okay, so for the setup of this lab, what we have is a light bulb down at the other end of the room, okay, that's a normal incandescent light bulb, and then we're going to be looking at that light bulb through a telescope, which we can see right here. Now, this telescope actually just constitutes two lenses. One of them is called the objective lens, that's the first lens, and it has a long focal length, and then this is the eyepiece, and it has a short focal length. And so when we look through both of these, when the they're properly aligned, we'll be able to see a magnified image of the light bulb down there. And in order to help us, since you're unable to actually be here to look through the telescope, we're going to be placing what's called a CCD camera, which is on this mount. We're going to be placing that at various portion, places along the telescope um, and be able to capture some images. And this is actually where your data file is going to come from, from an image. And we're going to explain that all later in the lab, but that is just going to show up on the TV screen. Right now it's washed out um, just because the lights are on. But we're going to turn off the lights here in a second um, and actually look at what the image of the light bulb is on the uh, camera. So for part A here uh, is just to show that you understand the setup by drawing a laser ray di diagram. And so um, once, oops, just to get started here, I've drawn maybe a good starting place. We can represent the light bulb as just an arrow, okay? And maybe I would start by drawing a ray that starts here and goes through the center of the lens. Um, you can draw more rays if you want to, but that's the most important one. Uh, you should have an image somewhere between the lenses. Uh, so go ahead and draw that in and be sure to label all of your different angles and distances um, and make your notation really clear for the TA who will be grading it. Here I've included a human eye after the eyepiece so that we can kind of understand what function the eyepiece serves. So it's a good starting point, but go ahead and pause the video and do part A, and then go ahead and resume for part B afterwards. All right, to start out here, let's go ahead and focus the objective lens so that its focal length is at the point where we are imaging, which is gonna be the focus of the telescope. And so in order to do that, we're not gonna move the camera here, but we're gonna go ahead and move this lens and we can actually see on the computer this is a live feed of the camera we can see the bulb there it's down at the other end of the room we can see the bulb and as i move the objective in it becomes a lot clearer and narrower that red line represents a line out where i'm looking at the pixels across that line and their intensity and 255 is when they're maxed out okay and so what i can do is i can look at the image I look at the image, and then when that gap is the smallest, I know that it's in focus, because the light rays are going to diverge if I go too close. Well, if I go too close, they're not going to reach the focus. If I go too far out, they're going to hit the focus and then diverge past, and it's going to grow. And so I want when the bulb diameter is the smallest, and that's when it's also going to be in the most focus. Now, the problem here is that our light bulb is saturated. It's at the peak intensity. And so we don't actually know what's happening past that 255 mark. So what we can do is I have a couple filters here. And I'm just going to place them in front of the lens here to block out some light. You can see it's a lot dimmer, but the light bulb's still there. And we can actually see it doesn't actually have that hard cap that we're used to. Okay? At least that we were seeing before. And so we're going to go ahead and put these in here and then adjust the lens. And we can still see it come into focus right there. Oh wow, it's even better there. And then if I go too far, it goes blurry and starts diverging again and growing. So I'm just gonna gently adjust the objective lens until this comes into focus. Right about there. Okay, and so this is in focus here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and with the filters in place, 
I'm going to take a screenshot, save this image. Um, we'll just call it Lab 6. Okay. Okay, so that's saved. Now we'll go back to that in a second. So let's go ahead and turn on the lights, and we need to measure these distances. And so, our objective lens here, there's a, the, the nice thing about this bench here is that it has some centimeter marks. And so, if we come in here, we can see that this is about at the 81.8 or 9 centimeter mark. You can make your own measurements. And including this measurement should be in some uncertainty. Now, one way to do this would be to move the lens a little bit, move the lens back and forth until we see it go out of focus. And the point where it's in focus is what would be our uncertainty. And just to save some time, I already did that. And it's about two millimeters that I can move it and have it still be relatively in focus. And so your uncertainty of this one would be about one to two millimeters. Now here's the camera measurement. We're going to assume that the, there's a chip inside the camera. You can actually see the light bulb on there right now, which is pretty cool. But that chip is roughly in the center of the camera, maybe off by a couple millimeters, so that'll go into your uncertainty. But the center of this camera, if we follow down, is right where that, that screw is, where the lock is. And so make a measurement on where that screw is on the optical board bench. And again, this one probably about three to four millimeters just because we don't know exactly where that chip is inside the camera, but it's roughly in the center. Okay, so now we want to measure the distance from our objective here down to the light bulb. And so we have this tape measure. We're gonna go ahead and hold it tight. We've got the, the zero point. We've got the zero point down at the light bulb in the center. So I'm gonna come here. Now this is 10 meters. And then I'm holding this right to the center of the lens. So 10, 10 meters and about 17 centimeters. Now if I pull this a little bit tighter, it was a couple millimeters, a little bit looser, a couple millimeters, maybe even a centimeter. So this isn't a perfect measurement technique. And so you should put factor that into your uncertainty as well. Okay, we've pulled up the image that we captured in this program called Image J. And what we're gonna do is analyze it by doing the, kind of the same thing that we had done before by taking a line out. But before we do that, we want to calibrate the scale so we know what each pixel is in terms of um, actual distances on the camera chip. And so we can come here to analyze, set scale. Now I've already gone ahead and pulled up the specs sheet for our specific camera that we're using. And we know that it's 1280 by 1025 pixels across that chip. Is. And so 1280 is the horizontal uh, distance that we're interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. Distance in pi pixels is 1280. And then the known distance is right here. We can see the sensitive area of 6.656 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and convert to centimeters. So 0.6656 centimeters. So we have 1,900 pixels per centimeter. And that's just going to automatically adjust it in the program. Now what we can do is come in here and hit the prop, oops. First we can come in here and do a line out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda come to the bottom to make sure I draw a straight line. Make this, there we go. And then I'm gonna move it up across the diameter of the light bulb. Looks about right. And now I can come in here, hit plot profile, and this is kinda what we saw before, right? We see that it's not very intense. Gray value is just another word for intensity. So the pixels for each distance across this line, not very intense. And then, oh wow, it really comes up. And then it's relatively flat over the top and then drops off really quick. If this were an ideal light bulb, uh, it would be focused so that it kind of has an asymptote here, straight up and straight down. It's not, and so this could go into actually our measurement uncertainty. Now what we're gonna do is actually give you this data. So I'm gonna come in here and hit save data. Um, I'm just going to say lab six telescope data. And then I'm going to do a comma separated, CSV has comma separated values. And it's easy to pull up in Excel that way. And then we're going to go ahead and send you that file so that you can plot this in Excel. And then you can determine for yourself how you're going to measure this bulb diameter. Okay? 
So there's a couple different options here. Over the top, when it starts to flatten out here, we know that um, it is about the same, it is the intensity across the bulb is about the same um, in terms of peak intensity. So we really, really were just interested in um, somewhere along here it's starting. And I'll leave it up to you guys to determine how you want to do it at the start of the steep part, at the end or the middle, it's up to you. Um, just go ahead and think about it. Um, there's no real right or wrong answer there. But yeah, this is the data that we're going to give you. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video and complete uh, part B here, uh, which will end up in a result of you predicting the actual diameter of the light bulb down at the other end of the room. Okay, for part C here, what we've done is introduce the eyepiece to the telescope. So I've gone ahead and removed the camera, which used to be around here. I've moved it to the back of the eyepiece. And then I've also, this is just a lens right here that's in front of the camera. The camera chip is at the focal length of this lens. And so what's happening is that the, the rays, the light rays are coming in focusing and then they're diverging, going through the eyepiece and then they're becoming parallel. And in order for us to see with this lensless camera, the parallel rays, we need the eyepiece. This lens acts as the cornea for our eyes or, or the, the lens on our eyes. And then this is kind of like where the uh, image is focusing on our eye. And so. Let's go ahead and if we look at the screen, we can again see that moving the eyepiece in comes to a focus and then it starts diverging again if I move too far. Once again, we're saturated and so I'm going to go ahead and put in one of these filters again. Okay, there we go. So we see it blurry and I'm moving it closer and closer to the camera. It's coming into pretty good focus there better focus there and then it's starting to get blurry. One thing you'll notice is that this is upside down. You should study your your ray diagram you drew in part A to make sure that you accounted for that and that that makes sense. But this looks like pretty good focused image to me and so let's go ahead and turn on the lights. So now we know where the image, the real image was forming over here. And uh, this is the focal length of the eyepiece where the image was. Two to three millimeters uncertainty here. Again, just because I can move the eyepiece a little bit and it still looked relatively in focus. And so that's actually all the data that you're gonna need. Um, oh, one other thing. We don't need to measure where the camera is in this case. It's actually gonna be the same as we shift the camera out or back because the, the rays coming out of this are gonna be parallel. So um, that didn't actually matter. And so, yeah, that's it for the data collection of Telescope Lab. Uh, you'll have in part B a couple more questions that are just kind of conceptual. Just do your best or just to help you learn. Um, put some time and effort in it. Don't worry about if you got the right answer. Um, but I hope that you were able to uh, get some valuable knowledge out of this lab. And good luck with the rest of your calculations.